So, let's take a look at just how liable auditors could be. We now know that auditors are liable to the shareholders of the company and potentially to others as well, although issuing a disclaimer seems to solve that problem. But just how liable could an auditor be? Imagine that someone broke into your house and stole everything you owned. Let's now imagine that the police try to catch the person but completely fail due to poor police work. Whose fault is it that you've lost all your stuff? I mean, if the police haven't done their work properly, then absolutely. You should press charges and try to get some compensation. But the police didn't steal your stuff. They just failed to catch the person who did. The problem in auditing is that if directors do something that wrecks a company and the auditors did not see it coming, the danger is that those who have lost their money blame the auditors for not warning them rather more than they blame the directors, even though it was the directors who are surely primarily at fault for how the company is run. Auditors have long complained that this is unfair, that as auditors, if they've done bad work, they are willing to hold their hands up and pay something, but to have to pay everything just doesn't seem right. So the question is, why is it that people go after the auditors? Well, there are a number of reasons. It is often the case that audit firms are partnerships, and that means joint and several liability. One partner may have made a mistake, but all the partners end up having to pay. So if one partner ruins the audit, you're not suing that person, you're suing the entire firm. Audit firms, of course, big firms of accountants, are often seen as extremely wealthy. And the only other people you may have to sue, the directors, may not have that sort of money, so winning would be virtually pointless because they can't pay you anything. Add to that the fact that audit firms are typically required to have professional insurance. So when you sue the auditors, you're probably actually suing their insurers. So if the audit partners run out of money, the insurance firm should make up the difference. And then there's the reputation issue. The mere sign of a court case could result in an audit firm deciding to pay you something just to make you go away because they don't want the adverse publicity. It's hardly a surprise, therefore, that so many people target the audit firms and sue them if they think the audit work's been badly done. So naturally, audit firms have over the years been trying to solve this. And in different countries, different things have happened that may have changed just how liable the auditors could be. For example, in some countries, audit firms do not have to be partnerships. Maybe they can be limited companies. And that, of course, limits liability. But being a limited company has got other issues, like tax might not be quite so favourable. And then there's the annual accounts that you would need to produce and have audited. Many countries have gone for a middle ground allowing audit firms to be LLPs, Limited Liability Partnerships. 
a sort of cross between a company and a traditional partnership, with potentially the good things from both. So far, it's quite hard to tell whether the LLP status protects auditors that much. It is a relatively recent phenomenon, and we probably don't have enough court cases yet to know just how successful that transition might be. But a lot of big firms of auditors have become LLPs, suggesting they think it will at least partly solve the problem. But there are other things that can be done as well to maybe make the situation a little fairer. For example, if audit firms are targeted because they have insurance, maybe one solution to this is to require companies to buy insurance for their directors. That way, anyone who has lost money now has a choice of two pots of insurance to go for. And if the directors are partly to blame, this would seem to be fairer. But maybe there are other solutions as well. Governments could instruct judges to try to attain proportionate blame. Or in other words, to try to work out just how much of someone's losses are down to poor auditing. So if a judge says it's 40% the director's fault and 60% the auditor's, the auditors would only have to pay 60% of someone's losses, even if that person could not get the rest back from the directors. Or potentially, there's the idea of a cap. Maybe governments could decide that there is a maximum figure that any audit firm could be sued for. Picking that figure would be tricky, of course. It would surely depend on the size of the audit firm and the size of the company concerned. But maybe some formula could be devised whereby audit firms can only be sued for some proportion or multiple of their client's sales figure or profit figure, maybe. In the UK, in 2006, a new Companies Act arrived. And in that Companies Act, there are some new thoughts about audit liability. In that Companies Act, auditors are now being given the opportunity to negotiate an individual liability cap with each client. So the idea would be that when a company comes to you and says, we'd like you to be our auditors, before accepting nomination, you would sit down with them and say, we will only do it if you agree the maximum figure we can be sued for is that. If the auditors and the company cannot agree, then they'll have to look for another firm of auditors. So at the AGM, the resolution to appoint the auditors would have to say, shareholders, the auditors do not want you to sue them for any more than this. And if the shareholders refuse to accept that, another audit firm would probably have to be found. Now, as I said, different countries have been coming up with different solutions to this, but the problems of auditor liability are huge. At present, the worldwide audit market is dominated by a small number of firms, and there have been claims that this small number of firms have led to prices going up and quality going down due to the lack of choice. Governments are nervous that if one big audit firm was sued out of existence because they could not limit their liability, the lack of competition in the audit market could get even worse. So maybe it's no great surprise that many governments have been trying to increase protection for audit firms in recent years. Whether they should be doing that or not, maybe that's an interesting debating point. Many would argue if audit firms simply did better auditing in the first place, they wouldn't have to worry about court cases. Now, that's auditor liability. It's actually been a current issue for a very long time. I seem to remember it being a current issue when I was a student, and clearly that was many, many centuries ago. So it could come up, although it doesn't seem to that often. Just make sure that you are aware of the issues, who auditors are liable to, and how a disclaimer in the audit report could be a way of limiting liability as far as who to, and understanding how audit firms could limit liability in general by restructuring themselves as an LLP, for example, or maybe through government law, allowing them to agree liability caps with clients.